Hey guys. Okay, so to start off, I want to talk a little bit about Shiki's current mentality and just what he, what's been going, what was going through, probably going through his mind a lot during this chapter. Because while getting introduced to the rest of the cr rest of the crew and getting to in individually like J Jin, Clean, all them, like j just getting them reintroduced, introduced into the story, something very interesting caught my attention, which is that during the whole, during the time that we're getting in, like those title cards and then getting them reintroduced to us in the story. N if you noticed, none of them were... N n n n n absolutely none of them were, were, were pretty much given the title of the Shield of Edens or the the Blank of Edens. Like, just any kind of any kind of at attached title to them that, that would have indicated that, 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 from, that, that from Shiki had... That that, 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 that that they had taken up uh, they had taken up um with, with, like witch's mantle or, or or one of them had become her replacement and <clears throat> even the ones I expected to fill that role gin and clean like like the ones and 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 slowly but surely I and slowly but surely I think I, I started to clue in as to what Mashin was doing. And it wasn't until we got one little piece of dialogue from Shiki that made it all come together. Shiki in this chapter said, I will be the sword and shield of Edens. Simple words in themselves. But it shows that on top of the fact that Shiki is filling the role of captain, j just the fact that, that, that he hasn't, that, that he hasn't, like, technically, te like, technically filled, like, like, which is vac like, like, which is, which is position at all, Kind of shows he, even after three years, he truly, he truly hasn't let go or moved on from Witch's death either. Like even again, even after three years, like he's he's still, he's still grieving. And the only avenue he's ever found to cope was with with this loss was to kind of take up Witch's mantle himself rather than entrust it to someone else. Which, on a pure emotional level, I understand. I understand. Like, like why Mashima has gone in this narrative direction, and specifically as, as to why Shiki has done this. But at the same time, <clears throat> I feel if Shiki is serious about his role as captain and being a leader of the Eden, of the Eden Zero and its crew and its crew, and carrying everyone the rest of the way to Mother safely, then to some degree or another, I feel I feel Shiki has to know, like. Like that leader and captain is the role he need he needs to fill he need, he needs his full undivided attention for like he as as much as much as Shiki is as much as I sympathize with Shiki for pretty much holding on to for holding on to the memories of witch and whatnot he, he, he Shiki like like Prince Shiki cannot afford to take on that extra weighted burden of being the four of being the four star shine as well even, even if it's on a purely representative level like he Shiki needs to needs to entrust someone with that role which also i th i think go which in its way uh, in its own way also goes to show another problem with Shiki right now which is the th th committing himself to protecting everyone and and just this this shows that 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 for just however much he's how much Shiki himself has <clears throat> has matured and become has ma has matured and and just grown into his grown into his position as a leader, he's also become e e e even much more emotionally distanced from everyone everyone despite it looking outwardly like things are like are as they always have been but yeah yeah Shiki himself ever since ever since Witch's death he's he's not. I don't think he's as he he. I think he's almost kind of distanced himself from everyone, and that that in itself is also a problem. But I I think he he really he really needs to move on, and he really needs to find that, and he really needs to like decide who who it is. Ultimately, he needs to decide who it is he he pretty much wants, who he entrusts with with the position in order to carry on, which is will and whatnot kind of thing. Now. <clears throat> Yeah, let's let's talk about the even bigger thing about this chapter, though, which is that Captain Connor comes up comes aboard the Eden Zero, and yeah, Rebecca has a right to be worried considering just how much we've been through this song and dance before with Connor. But as now, as far as what's going on with the con with this Connor situation in itself, I've got more than my fair share of theories with this one. The first is something that that someone mentioned in a Twitter post, which is that. 
which is that Connor is part of a manufactured line of an androids, all all with the all with the designation of of Connor, um, and, and that all again all of them have been created by Ziggy. But unlike with the other ones, he's he's created the, the, this this one seems to have had have a little bit more free will, I suppose. The other possibility, and the one I'm kind of personally going for with right now, is that Ziggy has dipped his, his metallic toes into the process of cloning, meaning either the Connor we, he's, who serves under him right now is the original source, or his original, original, per, original or, or the real Connor is still out there somewhere. But in either situation, like, the, the biggest oddity here with this, with this Connor situation in, in, the, in the now is, is that we've only, is, is only recently learned that, that he was working at a factory manufacturing droids for Ziggy. Like that that's the part of this that seems more like and just the fact that he only recently like escaped is the part that seems a little more than a little suspicious right now, which also leads into the third theory I have, which is that Connor and the one working and the, this Connor and the one working for Ziggy are one and the same. He just pretends to to put on this different persona to lure the Eden Zero crew into Ziggy's traps. But right now, I am kind of going a little bit more for the cloning theory route because that feels more in line with what we're seeing right now in in the story with with Connor. But again, just on the whole thing of him man him managing to escape from Ziggy's factory, that's the part of this that still doesn't quite add up a bit here, and makes me say that if if this person if this Connor is a clone or an android of of the original. Of the original, then he, then he, then he, then Ziggy let him escape. But at the, but at the same time, I can kind of understand where's where Shiggy's coming from as well. The, the 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 fact that they even have this, the fact that this even happened at all, is kind of the best clue, best clue they lead they have in order to find Ziggy at long last and stop him. But I just don't, I. But they have to know that that it's not exactly a good idea to go in there unprepared. Like that's that's one thing that that this is gonna that this particular like this particular expedition is gonna need to prove is, is that th that they have improved and that they're not just gonna rush in and they're not just gonna rush in unprepared. That's the one thing I'm kind of hoping for. Um, with that said, though, let's talk about the title con the t little conversation between Shiki and Elsie in this chapter because. Elsie says she's on a planet not too far from where the crew is now, and she also lets slip that her home used to be ar around where she is now. So to me, that just kind of confirms what I've been saying for a while now, which is that during the three-year gap, she's either been gathering forces in order to end the civil war on her planet, or, or, or just in general, like, 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 in order to bring order back to it, or she's in the, th or she's in the thick of it all right now. But Mashima's Mashima is definitely setting her up to cover a whole arc on her home planet, and yeah, if the Aoi War arc was any indicator of what Mashima is truly capable of with a war arc, then I feel this civil war is going to be even more bloody than than, than that. Uh, the, like at this point, we need to assume Mashima is capable of plunging this whole world he's created into all-out war. So, like any and any anything can happen, anyone can die, kind of thing. Um, another interesting little thing I really liked in this chapter, though, is we also do see how Rebecca had become a, the famous beekeeper she is she is now, which is thanks to a little help from a little help and coaching from, from a little help and coaching from like like, like Couchpo, which not only makes a lot of sense, but because she, she, don't get me wrong, I love Rebecca, but she definitely would need a little bit of little bit of help in order to get those subs up for sure especially with the way she has but i also love how it does show just how much like couch po and rebecca's bond as friends has in fact grown over the three years and couch po herself has kind of come into her own as as like her own little like a member of the crew uh this also makes me wonder though like with this whole like this insight into rebecca's like in like increase in popularity as a beekeeper, that also makes me wonder, where's Labilia? Like, don't get look at me wrong, guys. For as much as I still I don't like the character, I do recognize that that, that Labilia is is was I don't know the current situation with her, Rebecca's rival. So now it's just wondering what's happened to her because it feels like Mashman just kind of dropped her from the story entirely at this point, 
And, like, again, I don't... Again, I'm not a big fan of the character, but I would like to know what's going on with her right now. Like, this... Again, this did kind of... This just kind of popped in my head, but labilly has been kind of MIA from the series for a while now. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. When I saw Jin and Laguna again, I expected them to go through changes, but... I was not expecting them to be dripped out and down as they were. Like, Mashman went ham on their character designs, even more so than the others that the showing how they've matured over the three years. And yet, yeah, now, now just, like, just how they've been dripped out makes me just want to know just how much more powerful they've gotten as well to accompany these new looks. Um, Mashma also went all in on the fans for this chapter, which I'm not complaining, but it did only really make me wonder, did... Did did did, sis, did did ever fill out over the past three years, or or that just or is that just what she's or is that because it's just what she's wearing? Because I swear her boobs and ass got bigger over the three year time skip. Like I don't, I don't know. It feels like Mushroom went kind of Oda on it on Ivory's character design in the sense where the only way you could make her look older or more mature was to give her bigger bust. But again, not complaining, just kind of a little odd in my just kind of her. Her character design looked a little odd, weirdly enough. I, I can't describe it. Uh, but, yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I got for this review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, analyst, crunch rule, be sure to hit the notification bell, subscribe button, and just share the video around, guys. Dark Knight of Enemy, signing off. Later, everyone.